Hey now, welcome to Hexfire. And we're live. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be um, a quick walkthrough of the new public facing uh, staking ladder analysis dashboard that's up. If you want to take a look at that and you can send me some feedback, much appreciated. Hey, JL, nice to see you in the uh, chat there. Yeah, these uh, ad hoc streams make it difficult to let people know in advance. But thanks for joining. Hey, Red Squirrel, good to see you. All right. As always, hit the like and subscribe if you're not already liking and subscribing. All righty. Let's head over to the Hexfire site and take a look at what's going on. So I've been talking about adding new additional visuals <clears throat> in ways for, for people to get at public data. And a lot of times what I come up with may not be uh, necessarily what everybody wants, you know. So if you have feedback, drop me a note or comment on things that should be changed or things that should be updated. Um, and any additions, you know, because I've got some cool things I can throw in there. And there's probably a lot of things I haven't thought about. Um, as some of you know, we have this uh, this link to the Hexfire IO site. It happens to be up here as well, um, but you get to this directly by going to hexfire.io. And if you go to hexfire.io, you will see now a new ladder analysis button, which will bring you to the dashboard up here at the top of the screen. And and even though I recognize you can't really do a whole lot with this if you're in uh, on a mobile phone, I did include the link on the mobile for the time being, so that you can actually click through and, and get to the same site um, through uh, the mobile format. All right, so that's that's your way in to go see this. You can go go play with it and see what's going on, and uh, that gets us into this panel here make it a little bit bigger and shrink it down to size a little bit i'm playing with um i'm playing with a lot of the different settings in terms of uh, sizing and whatnot but i figure most people know how to zoom so they can they can provide some feedback and zoom into the things that they'd like to see on screen and i'll uh, i'll go larger in a moment but this gives you kind of the layout <clears throat> of what's here and because I don't have a, um, a filter set ahead of time um, what we see are all all stakes that are currently open are being evaluated and reported up onto this uh, up onto this dashboard and uh, so with that I'm gonna grab an address Let's see if I got one handy mm -mm. Let me just grab some random address. Where last time I ended up being Bay 8, um, which is one of the big boys in the uh, environment. And so I'm just going to grab a random stake, non OA, OA related address, and head over to uh, the panel here. Uh, so like on a lot of the other visuals, um, the way I have these set up is so that you can come in and drop in your address is or address, comma separated. And what it'll do is it'll pull up your staking data on the screen. And in this case, <clears throat> what it has done is it's looked at this address and uh, random, like purely random. I have no idea who this is at all, but they have four different sticks. So the first thing I'll I'll draw your attention to is at the top of the screen. We know that this is non OE related. If I was doing some sort of analysis on this page, I might want to be able to, to select that. I want to select um, ended no, so the stakes are not ended and not good accounted. And what it's going to show me on the screen is um, year over year, an estimate of what their average ROI is for the stakes they have open, how many of those uh, mining stakes are open, how much hex they have mined, um, meaning what did they deposit as principal, the uh, T shares that are assigned to that. It's a pretty big one, right? So this is uh, well over shark, 
right? Um, estimated uh, total total yield, and then their estimated payout. So this particular ladder made up of one to trust is 2.2 billion. The estimated payout, and it breaks it down for, over the years 2030, 2036, 2038, um, and the largest uh, amount coming out in 2030 should not be too surprising for us. Now, directly to the right of that, I've created a, um, a card visual which will show the individual stake um, in order. You can click on 2030, for instance, and what it'll do is it'll cut that down and just show you those two different stakes that are, that are underneath 2030. You could also select a different year um, or if you want to get fancy, you know, control select and you'll end up with two of them. So you, in this way, you can go through the list because that comes in handy because some people do have um, some very large stakes. <clears throat> so first, first visual on the left is by year. Now, why is that necessary? Well, perhaps if you're evaluating your staking ladder. Now, of course, I'm looking at all stakes at one time here, but, um, you know, when you filter it, you can actually identify um, which years you might be light in, uh, in t-shirts. So if mining is your thing, you might want to look at it that way and look at how um, you might fill in those rungs. Using the same data in the center panel, which I, which I have already mentioned, are these cards, and it's called a card because that's the type of visual that you can pan through and look at, you know, to see which stakes are are of interest to you and, and uh, what they might be. And more can be added here because I'm using uh, the data the way I am. It comes up a little funny, but I can go ahead and click any year, and it'll just show me all of the all of the stakes that are expected to end that year in order of date. Not surprising that there's so many of them with the same dates. Um, click off and it'll restore that list. Another interesting feature, cool feature here, is when you go to further to the right, it will also show you um, what your league is at the top or the estimated league position at the top um, and a pie chart of the T shares that you have expiring by year. And then to make it a little bit more visual, if you go even further to the right, you can see a column chart, which will show the same thing, right? So the number of T shares expiring. Um, now, what we can do, you can always click on these and, you know, we can actually drill down further into the detail or load up other visuals that might give you a better analysis or something a little bit more detailed. But when I do select a particular year, no, notice that on the left-hand side here of uh, the dashboard, it does it does filter down to the year that I selected. All right, and another way to do that is, you know, I could also select a year in the pie chart and you'll notice it's highlighted in the in the uh, column and it's also filtered out all of the stakes that might be ending so when looking at the entire list it might be um, might be a little tough to see but <clears throat> i'll throw this address back in here and we'll just re filter by that i don't like how these colors came out um, system does that automatically based on the years uh, but uh, I don't like that. I'd like it to be a little bit different. Let me take that filter back off. <clears throat> so I'll have to play with that a little bit, but uh, it just so happens these years all are a blue color for this particular uh, this particular address. Um, so again, by having this information up on the screen, I could pick a particular year and you can see how it's filtering out. It gives you some easy ways to move back and forth between these and and see more detail about these particular um, particular stakes that are here. Um, below the T-shares, you can see that we also have the, uh, the estimated hex payout by year and that's giving us a percentage 
as well as uh, again the column chart on the on the right hand side and so uh, you can play around with this to your heart's content and try to try to break it or see if there's some other things you might want to add I'm going to turn my filter back off and go look at all the years again. Let me throw this guy in. I didn't even look to see what is. Uh, yeah, so so even though he has so many T-shares, 67,000, he is only a super shark. I believe to get to whale status, he'd have to have 100,000 T-shares. And now. Uh, <clears throat> The other thing we can do is we can look down here below. Um, I have I have a couple other pieces and visuals that I've added. One is um, what did it cost based on the estimate of the day of that, that all of these stakes were made to um, to create these miners. And based on the data, I think that the hex that was deposited was seven hundred and sixteen thousand dollars worth of hex. Um, it is uh, accrued a value now in terms of hex times the current USD price of about forty-one million dollars. That's crazy. <laughs> and then uh, for profit loss, I've um, I've done the math there automatically. And so this these particular stakes, when they you know at the moment on paper only, because we know that you cannot emergency end stake these. Um, without losing quite a bit, if not all. Um, the value on paper is $40 million for this. And then directly below that, I have the hedron per day that this, this miner could be minting. How much hedron they have currently that they can mint? It looks like we're at 54 billion. Not bad. I think it's $100,000 US at the moment, something in that neighborhood. And then at end of stake, they will have 186 billion hedron that could be minted. So this kind of gets you into the idea of how we can begin to build out these dashboards uh, for the ultimate maximum effect for you um, to be able to see the, this kind of information um, pretty quickly at almost at a glance. Um, by coming in into um, into these types of dashboards, um, overall we can see this is something I've talked with Crypto Sloth about. There's about 24 trillion hedron that could be minted today, and as we've seen um, by by looking at some of the other staking panels and whatnot that we've done research on this, um, quite a bit of hedron does not get minted. Uh, so stakes end all the time without the hedron being minted. And then based on all of the stakes that currently exist today, which are open, uh, non-OA, you know, non and they haven't been good accounted, uh, something on, in the neighborhood of 192 trillion uh, hedron can come into existence in the future. So what 24 is about as maybe about 12% of all the mintable hedron that could ever be minted as of staking behavior today, about 12% of it is actually mintable today. And uh, yeah, so that's where we're at with this. So now you guys can get to this through the, um, you know, through the public facing Hexfire IO site, you just click through. Um, we were able to get to this uh, best probably on a desktop. Uh, so I have some, I have some other large dashboards in mind, and what would typically in the uh, dashboard business, you know, called dashboard business, but data analytics business, you'll make these dashboards very very large, and then what people will be able to do is, you know, maybe off of larger titles, pick an area, um, go to it, you know, do a focus mode on it. And in this way, what they're able to do is see a lot of this information on the screen um, all at one time. Just easy for easier for navigation. Um, any of these that are large like that have that capability. 
Um, for the people with the guest accounts through the Patreon, what you're able to do also, of course, is get to the data and download it, take the snapshots of, of the pictures. Um, this is fairly this is fairly rudimentary vanilla right at the moment, um, but uh, there's a lot more that we can add to this with your feedback for what would, would be useful to the community. I mean, I know I have some things in the back burner that I haven't gone after, um, like Mintable, uh, Com, you know, that type of thing. Um, I haven't, you know, I have the Hedron in here, but I haven't really do dug into um, the Icos of staking or the Hedron staking. I know that's, that's something, but we do have, you know, we have half a dozen creators building in that space and focusing on that so um be nice to bring some of what, some of that data together maybe from um dev huey hsi watch uh you know crypto sloth but um you know that that'll come in time as we we get there so yeah post up questions comments thoughts on how this type of a dashboard might be more useful, you know, to you to be able to, to get at the information. I, I think right off the top, what I was thinking is, um, you know, using maybe expanding the space on this a little bit and building maybe some custom um, analytics, right? Uh, some custom measures or algorithms to maybe say, hey, listen, looking at your looking at your ladder it looks like you have an average of this much per year coming out in hex um, if you'd like to um, if you'd like to increase that or make it equal perhaps consider um, a new miner for this year this time frame this amount you know maybe maybe some things like that to really help analyze how to fill in those those blanks you know a lot of times i'm defeated <laughs> by, you know the ideas are good right i like the ideas right um and uh but it almost defeats the purpose sometimes because when you look at things it's the answer is always earlier is better right meaning uh you get your stakes in earlier you never get a better t-share rate than today Right, never going to happen unless you go with a peripheral or um, where you get an HSI um, auction. Um, you're just not going to get a better t shirt rate, right? So, for those who already have their dry bag and their dry powder and they're taking position, um, it's kind of a moot point. Just take the position, right? You get the best deal if that's the case. But there are a lot of people that are waiting for Pulse Chain. And so once Pulse Chain comes out, they'll be setting stakes in Pulse Chain. And, you know, these types of techniques will uh, will apply as well, right? Uh, so, so, yeah, so those are some of the things I'm thinking about. Maybe some ladder guidance. Um, yeah, everybody has a time frame that they're going to be in. Uh, there's probably some other analytics to be added here for maybe uh choosing a strategy maybe that's something to add to this you know where you can perhaps there's a button that says hey cycle i'm using the uh, four-year cycle strategy um you know where typically you know how that's taught is to uh, buy in the down year perhaps dca upwards for some in the uh in the second year and then mid third year to the end of the fourth year take profit and then repeat right so you hold until prices get to the bottom again and you start DCing. that might be a strategy um my personal strategy well i that that's kind of advanced even that's both that's both the norm of the advice that you get out there you know to try to try to time the tops and bottoms but it's also advanced because it requires you to really have a handle on things and have a, have control of your emotions. So sometimes that doesn't work out that way. Uh, but that would be uh, a strategy. Another strategy, which is the one that I followed first and prefer, is more of a flow strategy. I set my, my years in advance so far that I think, based on what crypto has done, and what I think it might do in the, in the future, not financial advice, don't know, 
is that price goes, even if it comes down, it goes up over time. And so if it goes up over time and I put my starting point out far enough, then I can create what I call a hex flow, which and it could be a crypto flow. It's kind of expanded to that now because I have two or three assets that I'm doing this with, including Hex and Hedron and Icosa, and I'll probably do that with Pulse, Pulse X. Uh, and, and Hex on Pulse Chain <clears throat> is that I just want a steady flow. I'm more than happy to share gains with other people um, if my, I need to, for some reason, take profits at, at a bad time, as long as, uh, you know, price was, as long as I'm not taking a bath doing it, right? Uh, this whole trying to live off of crypto thing is tough. <laughs> so, it takes it takes a, it takes some uh, some you yeah, have a strong stomach to be able to come in and uh, get in in something like a 2019 2020 hold to the end of 21 sell wait a year and a half before you buy back in. I, that's tough. I know some guys right. They do this. This is what they do. But I. You know, I'm not even sure I understood. <laughs> I'm not even sure that I understood. Uh, you know, cycle top, sell and go away. I didn't know if that was even a strategy, right? And don't come back again because uh, you know we're hearing all the media. Um, you know, it's always now, now, now. So yeah, yeah, okay. So um, again, I'll ask you guys uh, if you if you think of things to to um, add to this public facing stuff the use of these dashboards would be super useful I'm on it um, these aren't that bad to put together really uh, you know the probably the most help I need is the intellectual designing help you know like what is it that people want you know because I, I go off of like that table on the left hand side over here when I'm looking at just the data, and that, that's fine by me. I don't, I mean, I like all the other stuff, but that this isn't my my first go-to, right? My first go-to is I want a, I want a good old uh, Excel spreadsheet that, that I can go look at. All right, let's take a look at the chats. I saw you guys, JL and the squirrel. I see you, man. Man, I'm watching some funny videos today about squirrels. I don't know. Apparently, you do one search for squirrels, and the next thing you know, you know everybody everybody's sending me squirrel stuff. Seeing it on YouTube and on the on all the shorts, even over on Instagram, squirrels everywhere. And what's funny about that is I do like squirrels. I'm not that into squirrels, man. You know, but they are some of the smartest animals in the world. Caliente, good to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Much appreciated. Clifton, I'm not sure I have seen your name before, but welcome. And I appreciate your, uh, you jumping in. And uh, yep, just trying to share. I can't tell you I'm right about all this stuff, but I can tell you that it's my opinion. That's for sure. And so I can try to at least share what I think has worked. I think I'm doing okay. I know I'm doing okay. <laughs> It's doing just doing just fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With strategies, it definitely starts with um, the novice strategies. I, I just commented on this the other, you know, just a few hours ago with somebody. You know, um, almost everywhere you turn, except if if, if you listen really close to like uh, Charlie Munger. You know, and uh, oh, what's and oh, geez, what's what's his buddy's name? God, I'm, I'm blanking out. See, this is what happens when you get too old. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, right? So the whole Berkshire Hathaway um, approach, and a lot of VCs. If you listen to any VC chats, what they'll talk about is um, buy and hold, right? That's how you find something good. You might try to find like eleven really good things or 12 right and you find something good maybe one or two of them make it but, but you only experience the gains uh if you if you uh if you if you 
buy and hold, right? And then if you and I follow the uh, the double down or let the winners run doctrine, so that once I find something that really is doing well, I stick with it, right? And I, and I try not to jump ship and bounce around like a damn pinball pinball machine. Mm, you guys probably don't know what the hell a pinball machine is. So, anyways, I try not to bounce around like a ball between different things. So, um, that that's the methodology. But um, you do well in anything. First thing, any advisor, you go, you think you're doing the right thing. You talk to an accountant, and you talk to your lawyer. You know, maybe you talk to a financial planner. First thing they say is, how much of it can you sell right now? They want to know how much you can sell. And their advice is all slanted towards, hey, you got to sell it now and get out. You got your 20%, you got your 40%, you got your 100%, you should sell and get out. You leave some in. But um, but that's the advice. That's all they know. You know, and that's how things are. It's the same thing with the crypto guys, even the well-respected ones outside of Hex and more of the general population. They basically... Um, you know, there are some good ones, but most mostly the message that comes across is buy now and that and sometimes they'll do that right up till the top. Uh, time the top and sell and buy back later, right? Which is just encouraging trading um, off the hook, which is what happens. Um, yeah, so it got me thinking about that with this whole strategies. Yep, build, build the bags with each asset. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, that's been going pretty well. I never intended to, I guess I did in a way. I mean, I have I have my bags outside of crypto um, because I was, I've been doing, um, you know, financial independence retire early for a long time. And, you know, I, I think 70 years a long time. And during that period, um, you know, I was able to get to the point where my savings rate was about 50%. And uh, having a savings rate of about 50% was huge, man. It was like a big deal. And I um, I was listening to to dollar cost crypto the other day. He was talking about um, frugality and whatnot. And he made a really super good point. You know, when you look at things like, uh, you know, like budgeting, and you're, you're talking about... Uh, uh, you talk about budgeting and you say, well, I have my expenses on this side and I have my revenue or my income on the other side and you can't pay your bills, um, then naturally you should spend less, right? That's one, one theory. But here's the thing is that's not the upside, right? The upside is increasing your income, right? Figuring out ways to increase your income because you can only reduce, you know, so much. Uh, there's all you know. Everybody has some expense at some time. There's only so much you can reduce. You have a, you can make much. You should be able to do some of that, but also um, you have much greater progress by increasing your um, increasing your your um, your incomes and your streams. And that's where things when people talk outside of crypto, they talk about 401ks. And um, I stay away from insurance products, um, but uh, individual stocks in some cases. Um, real estate, that type of stuff. All of those can create nice streams um, for you. And then crypto was a new one for me. It was new, you know, back in 17, 18. Um, and it's grown to be huge, you know, because uh, of the price appreciation. In any case, um, that's how I'm involved with this, is that, you know, I had this hex stream. And then this guy, Alex, God bless him, I don't know. <laughs> well, very nice of him to, to build the Hedron. I he built that whole Hedron system, Icosa, and so now I have this Hedron Icosa stream that comes through. And I, I focus 99% on um, on Hex, and you know, and I'm not showing, um, but I mean, if you give me a bunch of stuff for free, I'm taking it. And if you tell me I can stake it to earn more income, I'm going to do that. And so now, even though it's maybe a 1% position overall for what I have going on, it's, uh, I got the Hex, I got the... Uh, the Icosa, um, you know, the Hedron, not to mention I, I did chase a few degen plays, but I really try not to do that. And that's not my advice because my experience is every time I do that, every time everybody around me is saying, hey, it's a great idea to get into um, into this, uh, you know, hourglass game. <laughs> now I know, right? Don't don't get into those things. But, but those kill me. 
So even just coming into the X system, you have those three income streams. And then now I'm going to get a copy of those in a few weeks, maybe, or a few months or whatever happens. And so now I have, all, I have six of those damn things going on. And then, uh, you know, I'll have uh, the pulse, whatever I can do with that. I don't know if I'll validate, but get the pulse coming at seven. And then pulse X is eight. I don't know how many more of these I can take. You know, and I probably got a few I didn't even mention, you know, that are out there. Um, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Some of these other protocols you maybe had gotten into. These new ones are coming out. I just don't have the brain power to be able to look at them all. You know, but I do like this. So I got the brain power, brain power to look at these things. So, yeah, I guess I guess maybe I should uh, create a little footnote or a little... You know, a little message or something that says, I went from, I went from one crypto income stream to eight. <laughs> and, you know, just like everybody else here, right? You look at all these different things happening. But yeah, build the bags. And then uh, the point here, which got me thinking about that, is that as you build up these assets, you do have to recycle the profits or not. And um, I do, by the way, I do appreciate the whole hold and never never sell approach um forget about crypto for a moment you cannot live off of assets without exchanging them for something i don't care what it is right and so it's not reasonable to never sell but it is reasonable to hold for a long period of time and to do that i mean i guess if you're just playing games you can just never sell and that would be okay too um but eventually you got to be able to to sell to take profit and uh the world is changing around us red squirrel yep the squirrels live in my head rent free i'm so jelly man i, I like watching these videos i'm like how come i can't get my squirrels to come to me and eat out of my hand they're not running around on my shoulder but i i guess you know on the one hand, I know some of those people will keep them as pets, and so that's why they're so friendly. But I know a guy down at the local park here. He hangs out there most days. He's not a bummer, he's just a retired guy. And uh, he keeps peanuts with him, and those squirrels will come right up on his lap. So I'll have to work on that. Hey, GZ, good to see you. Welcome. Hey, Aim, good to see you. You're like the number one responder to my tweets, man. You're like the first person I see. Being your own investor, Clifton. Bank of borrow is the best use case for store value for crypto. X is the best use case by far. I, I I concur on all that, you know. It truly is. Getting into crypto, you're your own banker, um, particularly self-custody. If you're doing it right, <clears throat> you know, and you're, you're managing your own keys, you are your own bank. So make sure you take care of your security, all that different stuff. Um, and manage it and then as far as crypto goes uh, yeah man uh, hex i haven't seen anything better not yet i don't expect to and like i said i let my winners run so i'm not going anywhere for another 20 years probably yeah <laughs> at every turn clifton at every turn building the ecosystem room rewards hodling is, is a very creative way to earn passive income while keeping equity it is um man every time i every time i go into these uh, details and start looking deeper into the hex system even though I, I know a lot about it already it all comes back to the same thing the incentives over and over again are to stay in and put more in i mean just look at the fomo you can just watch some of the some of the videos i got the same fomo watch some of the some of the youtube videos these guys who are in they've already made it in x and they're like hey there's a there's, there might be a dip coming and they're planning to go buy more you know i mean it is very addictive um it's a very strong process it's pretty cool yeah caliente I think Tetra and automated strategies will help, but that brings a system of overseeing, which will be a new discipline in itself. Yeah, um, I I can't wait to see where Tetra goes. I'm not showing for it. Um, I, I had the privilege of speaking to Stu long before he launched, right? Like like almost a year ago, 
and uh, so I was exposed to some of the public seed rounds, maybe that I could get, but I decided not to go into it for my own personal reasons, not because I questioned his ability or his team's ability at all. In fact, I've seen nothing but uh, up and up on, on Tetra. Uh, but I'm not shilling it as well, right? So I'm not like encouraging people to go jump in there. I'm intrigued as heck by it because um, outside of uh, of crypto, um, I would do a lot of things like this. You know, there were, the, there were applications that I was part of building and um, managing, and we would we would string everything together. But I'll I'll tell you, and for those who don't know Tetra. Imagine a tool that you can create a workflow with that says, first, go do this and if, and if, if this is true, go do the next thing. And if this is true, go to the next thing. That is the, uh, the approach. And so um, there's bots and stuff out in the real world, right? Outside of crypto that you can set up to do and do the same thing. And so the dangers I have seen in my work with those types of things have been that there's always unanticipated problems, right? And, you know, the internet isn't perfect and sometimes things don't execute and sometimes messages don't go through and sometimes there's uh, corruption of data files, that type of stuff. So I'm going to be very cautious, but I can't wait to see if this thing kicks off the way it is because um, if you're able to do some automation, of um of some of the some of the actions it would be huge right anybody who's had to sit down for two hours and mint hedron knows exactly what i'm talking about right? if i could set something up to do that for me i might do it but there is a trade-off right um and while i have high feelings about the team as i know it that's involved um i don't know you know what what the product's going to finally look like in the end so we're going to have to wait and see like everybody else but good good question good comment good stuff yeah totally too so many coins caliente i mean it's like i am uh, i'm convinced that people are going to fall down the pulse chain hole and they ain't, they ain't coming back out lots of them they're just going to be in this this uh new pulse chain because why would I, you know, except for the fact I have these other assets that have to go manage on Ethereum, why would I ever go back to Ethereum? And so it's going to be, it is going to be epic and off the hook for all of the things that are going to go on. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's true, Clifton, as far as having something that uh, can build, build for you and help you build your bags. Um, yeah, I do wonder. I'm not. I'm not a professional in any way when it comes to financial advice or legal matters, but or taxation for that matter. Right? And everybody's got to go do their own research. But um, I do wonder about how all this will come together um, in the end. You know, because even when I do things manually, everything's a reportable event. You know, it may not be something I have to pay taxes on, but it's something that's reportable and uh, having more and more of those. And, and so, yeah, I think that um, you can guarantee that if there's enough money tied up in anything, there is going to be somebody who's going to try to attack it. And that might mean um, a, a new attack vector. I mean, just look at all the all the things people are doing to the community right now. We got scammers. If you're not aware, we got scammers all over the place trying to come in and get us to uh, give up our pulse in advance. You know, give up our seed phrases, connect to bad bad wallets. People do things right when there's money involved. Um. Yeah, in a manner, you know, Clifton, good question when you ask this. Um, I, I have a very solid opinion on this that I think others share. You know, do I think uh, Pulse is the new ETH? Um, not as an ETH killer. That's not what I mean at all, because it's not an ETH killer. ETH changed um, its narrative. I mean, and the community involved with ETH has changed, changed its narrative. It is now a... a um, it's now the next Bitcoin store of value that has an opportunity to appreciate greater than Bitcoin or at least to the same levels as Bitcoin. 
And um, so I think that's the new narrative is to buy and hodl uh, ETH, perhaps, you know, stake it, uh, you know, in order to earn some returns. Um, and, you know, money's green. People, um, people might have had these ideas that was going to be the world's, uh, you know, online online platform to uh, to do smart contracts and it is it certainly was that first few few years but um you're a big you're a big eth holder perhaps you're involved in the uh, in the community perhaps you have sway and you say hey would you like millions of dollars because your ETH is worth ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars each, or would you like a lot less because gas needs to be less? Which, which choice are you making? I'm guessing the guys and ladies are going to pick the millions, right? And so, just by our nature, right, we like the fact that it's going to be very expensive. And yeah, I guess that's what other chains are for—to do the low, low price stuff, right? So that's where I think that's headed. But Pulse will be its own thing. Maybe it's going to be the new home for, uh, it'll be the new home of, um, you know, of, of the smart contracts that are being used instead, which I think is very possible. Hey, Bernard, welcome to the chat and welcome to the stream. Alrighty. Um, so just kind of recapping back here, we've already been on for 40 minutes or so, and I just wanted to highlight this. So again, guys, um, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is the dashboard that I was talking about. If you've been using Hexfire um, IO, let me get over to that screen. <clears throat> if you've been using Hexfire IO, um, when you go to that site, what you see is a format like this, which allows you to swap back and forth between a, um, a mobile-friendly site and, uh, and a desktop site. I've included this ladder analysis dashboard link at the top, um, depending on how things go and how valuable it is to people. Oops, excuse me. Um, how valuable it is to people. We'll make changes to it and, and keep it on here. Perhaps it'll become a permanent fixture. Or this is why I really need feedback from people as to to its use. When you click through to that, it'll bring you to um, a larger dashboard, which allows you to put in addresses and evaluate them. Um, at the moment, I, I didn't include a way to like change this, but it'll list out all of the stakes um, by year. It'll total them up actually over here in this left hand left hand panel, and give you an idea of you know, what your T-shares are that are coming out per year, uh, you know, what your estimated payouts will be, etc. In fact, I, I think what I'm going to do is, because I for these estimated payouts, what I've been doing is I've been doing uh, the 180-day moving average, which is super conservative. Um, but the estimated payouts would go up quite a bit if I use the payout model. So I may incorporate the payout models at some point. The payout model being the forecast for what daily payout per t-shirt will be in the future. Um, so you can grab that. And then once you have your, you, you add your list of addresses here and you see by year, you know, how many you have and how many are coming out per year. Um, you can then go to this next panel and actually look at them individually if that's your thing right and again more detail can be added some of these look kind of flaky because you know these are the 2019 numbers you know people were staking that's all that's left out there in 2019 these really tiny tiny uh, stakes the rest of them either closed ga or um, have lost all their you know all their yield uh, but you can actually see those. You can cross filter these by picking a year and then it'll change. Um, you know, I picked 2000, uh, let's pick 2024. Uh, it'll show all of the, uh, the data for 2024. You can turn those on and off. And then at the same time, it'll highlight both the pie chart as well as your, um, your column chart for the particular year. Give you ways to slice and dice this and be able to evaluate them a little bit further. 
besides payout, the other thing I think that uh, has been a pretty big topic um, recently is uh, this emergency end state concern. You know, people have the concern that we'll, we'll see these large emergency end stakes in the future. We do have the data on that. I mean, we can, you know, I can tell you exactly how much um, how much hex could come out if everybody emergency end state. And I think the number was in the 30, 30 billion range last night. Um, but the reality is that's kind of that's kind of like a false thing to worry about, right? Because that's not going to happen. Everybody's not going to do that. Shoot, just the cost to do it might be a million dollars in gas. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know what the, what the number is. Probably figure it out. Um, so that's what this is all about. You can come in here and play with this now. It is public and it will give you some, some valid information. And again, I am taking feedback on this um, so that we can make changes to it. It's really difficult, by the way, to get people's engagement. And I've been working hard at this. And um, I get some feedback sometimes, but, um, you know, it's, it's not as much as I think I like, you know? Yep, yep, yep. Humanity is a piece of work, man. That's for sure. I'm crazy stuff. Woohoo! Hey, Bernard. Hey, thanks for watching. Oh, we went up a little bit. Almost there. Almost to a thousand. <laughs> I had two big events this week. One is, uh, one, one big event, um, was that I did, I did the corny joke routine on, uh, on Twitter last weekend for 24 hours and I was posting nonstop, uh, you know, corny jokes with the threat that I would keep posting corny jokes unless people came and subscribed. But I, it worked out pretty good. It was pretty, it was fun. A lot of funny jokes too. I didn't make all, up all the jokes. I did make up a few. Some are just well-known internet technology jokes. Uh, so we got up 50 people from that and then almost another 50 this week with uh, Maddie Allen, you know, uh, post stream going through that. So yeah, we're getting close to a thousand. You know, trying to get to critical mass on uh, on how this works. Um, yeah, so we're just kind of like going going at it, man. Just going at it. Uh, so yeah, good stuff there. All right. When will the pulse data come online? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question, Clifton. So there's obviously there's some work to get these these uh test nets up and that and that work's being done and then once the test net is up everybody downstream then has to do something right now sometimes not too bad it's just a click and you know clicking a button flipping a switch um sometimes there's some data stuff that needs to be done um so there's a time delay between when they when they get up and running and when we um yeah, everybody can access data and of course the 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 web apps are going to go first right because it can't even be usable unless they're piped correctly um so i don't i don't believe i will have any barriers um in front of me to be able to bring pulse chain data online within hexfire that should be uh that should work pretty good um, because the data is the data, it's the same format. I do have to do some work in the background. It's probably a few weeks worth of work for me to do, um, but not not until I won't do it until we actually have something to get our hands on and work with, and things are settled down. Um, but I would expect that right after pulse launches within 48 hours uh, data will start flowing pretty freely down a couple levels because um, things like the subgraphs will be up and running um, there's also there's also like a ton more apps that people are building and uh, so I'm here you know I know two three guys doing all sorts of stuff you know things that they didn't do in the hex ecosystem when hex is by itself but in pulse chain they're doing it and they're including hex so we're going to have tons of options right and that's the uh, 
that's the name of the game for something that's uh, grassroots like this is that you need to have people engaging and making this all work so you can get at the different kinds of data not to mention i'm also very interested in getting an edge on some things you know like for instance i'll go over tomorrow um the t-shirt rate i have my uh my normal weekly t-share stream t-share friday i call it so tomorrow morning at 11 a.m eastern time in the u.s and we'll dig into that but just you know things like knowing about when big changes are happening uh you can get a little bit of an edge a little bit of an edge and if you're a heavy miner and that's your focus uh, it's useful because you know um that might be your entertainment keeps you away from uh from trading you know let's go look at the t-shirt rate again you know see how high it's gone so we'll, we'll dig into that yep hey thanks johnny appreciate it um yeah you have any questions let me know i have so many pages of data so many pages i think the site is the full site is almost 70 pages worth of data and uh, most recently, what I had done is I had uh, reconfigured it to the new design because um, pretty much it wasn't going to be used the way it was. There's some of us, there's a small percentage, they're going to go through a lot of those pages and dig deep. Um, but it was way aggressive in terms of like information. Now, I like that myself. That's why I built it that way, right? And uh, I don't mind that. I like that. I want to be able to go dig through all the nooks and crannies. But, uh, you know, not everybody was getting good use out of it. And, in fact, the way I had it presented um, was probably detrimental to people using it. So the newer format uh, give, gives, uh, gives the public-facing kind of view of, hey, this is, this is what Hex is all about. And, you know, and, uh, what we try to do with it and is on this left-hand side. Let's try to keep a really crisp kind of a kind of a listing of, okay, you want to know about price. If you come in into crypto, well, what's what's crypto all about? What's the price look like? What do you mean people lock up hex? They lock up hex. What does that mean? Well, it's why do they lock up hex? Because they get a payout. They get a payout term. Well, how much do you get? Well, this is how much people have been getting on average, you know? And then just following through you know, you know, explaining maybe share rate. So this is help, very helpful for people onboarding or learning. Even if they're not being onboarded by a person, even if you're onboarding yourself, you can start to get a handle on seeing, okay, well, what does supply look like? Well, hey, supply is pretty flat. So it is going up, we know that, but hey, it's not really that volatile, right? But then penalties, what are those about? And And how many more people like me are looking at this? What do you mean? What do you mean? There's there's uh, 120,483 stakers now. What does that mean? You mean that many that many addresses are in here? Yep. That's how many addresses are in here. Yep. Well, what about people who are holding liquid? Wow, we got 330,000 of those too. So, and there might be a combination of the two in there. So this is meant really to be kind of telling a story for the people so they can see what's happening and be able to get to the data um, rudimentary mining you know panel here to throw your addresses and see your own uh, your own stakes that are out there we've got maximus dow info hedron info a strategies page talking about laddering resources contact but this is much more compact because this is this has been done with like about a dozen pages of data you know, of, of different visuals, rather than mm, hunt and pecking through the rest. Um, eventually, maybe I'll get AI up and running, right? And uh, people will be able to actually use the AI to find all that. Sorry, this was small when I was talking about it. So, uh, yeah, so you can see on that left-hand side, that, that menu list. Yep, Clifton, thanks again for the good words. Enjoy, man. Enjoy. Um, I've, um, I took another step on, on this path as well. Um, so what we're looking at here is the, um, is the public facing stuff. Um, 
in addition to this, I have the ability to set up um, set up what we call guest accounts, which I've been reserving for our uh, Patreon users because it takes me some work to do it as well. But um, that has been pretty good. We went went through that last night on a different stream because um, that has opened the door to uh, exports and downloads from the from the data models. You know, so imagine looking at the same screens and being able to right click them and export the data. Um, you know, for your own use and that type of thing. So I think there's going to be some legs on that. And also, um, it always takes a lot of forethought on some of this stuff, but, uh, you know, also the ability to do ad hoc reporting of your own, you know? And so if, uh, if there's a demand for it and people want to do it, um, with a license, which isn't a license for me, it's a cost that goes from comes in from uh, from Microsoft um, but if you had a, had a license it's possible for us to maybe even do it with the guest account where you could actually come in and build your own tables of information and put your own filters on and then export it out I think the I think the trick with that is I think the licensing makes better sense because then it'll, it'll let you save everything so you come back to it and of course, uh, if you didn't know, the, and if somebody is interested in this, I've got a couple people on the Patreon that are. Um, this is something called Microsoft Power BI. It's not for the faint-hearted, but it's free, right? So you can actually download this software. You can't put it on the internet for free. You can be like, Kate, take a picture, or upload a file or something, sure. But you can't host it for free online. Um, they, that's where they get you with the licensing and the cost. But if you if somebody is interested in getting started with power bi um or loading those types of data models you can contact me i've made that stuff public before we have sources that you can get the data from uh, both, both now and after paul's channel launch you could build your own things like this if you really wanted to um in addition there there is nothing that i have built on any of these these pages that you can't put in Excel. So let me go back to say that again. And that's another thing I, I had a request for is uh, somebody was talking about maybe running a, doing a class on data imports. Um, but with quite quite a bit of the information we're going to be dealing with Pulse Chain and uh, you know Ethereum as we go forward, you can pipe all that into Excel. It's complicated but it's not as difficult as you might think and it's not quite that bad as far as being resource intensive at all i mean very very straightforward to um if you know how to do it right to build an excel spreadsheet that would bring all your ladder information for instance into the excel spreadsheet um and then once it's in there you, you can manipulate it and what and one of the nice things about that too is uh, anybody who knows Excel will know, but when you go to an Excel page and I actually import data and, you know, I put data in, into the page, you can actually make that part of, um, the query tool and allow the query tool to ingest it and update with it. And when it does that, so what am I really saying is you can go to a spreadsheet that's been set up properly put your addresses in the spreadsheet, no need to docs, right? And then Excel will read those addresses and go get the data for you. Um, so it's a little different way of doing things than, than some of the other apps. And I've used that for grabbing uh, Hedron auction data. I've built some, I've done some spec jobs for people where I, I built something for them for a few, for a donation or whatever. And they, uh, you know, they're able to use that Excel, and the difference there is because you're running it yourself. You, it's all yours. You push the button, it updates, brings back the data. I do that with all my, um, like my my Excel pages. I don't like. I mean, I I don't care if I have to. I'll go copy paste prices and stuff. But I just pipe them in. I just point them to, um, you know, to to one of the APIs. I just bring the prices and have it calculated for me do that type of stuff hey shellvox thanks for joining us i'm gonna go look right now while we're still on and then we'll drop this and 
and finish this up. See if we hit a thousand. Yeah, um, I wish, and I, I'll get my, um, I'll get my, uh, my websites in the process of being created, uh, you know, an actual website hosted website rather than using what I've been doing. And uh, once I have that, these things will be embedded there, and that opens up the door for a lot of other things, because you know, I, I, I guess people understand maybe, but when you start working with this kind of data and stuff. Um, there's all sorts of barriers to entry that usually have to do with dollar signs. Like I could do this, but I need to have a database and, but you have so much data, you can't use a free database and then you get to pay five, 600 bucks a month for one that you can actually use and blah, blah, blah. And that's why you, you see things that are obviously simple in concept to do but never get done right or if somebody does them like for instance alerts that was a part of the business i was in outside of crypto is man if you were working at my company you want an alert i had that thing monitoring everything it just send an email send you a text message they go make a file for you send you a picture whatever you wanted right um but you know, having having it set up to be able to scale is can be tough sometimes. But yeah, and that's why you see some of the people that have done it end up they're charging twenty, thirty bucks a month, sometimes more to set up those types of bots. Sometimes they just call them bots. But yeah, the widgets, the apps, all that type of stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So Johnny, um, yeah, you're asking about whether the software will show stakes data in one area from the Hex native platform and one started on the Hedron platform. E yes, but I'll give you the caveat. If you own the address and you put it in, actually it doesn't know if you own it, but um, it will show all of the HSI stakes um, that are associated with an address that you put in. And the, I included two ways to do to do this um so if i go back to the panel so anytime anytime you see one of my filters that i have in here you'll see sometimes it'll be listed as filter by by list of owner addresses and that's because i've gone through and created the cross reference between the hsi stakes and uh, who actually owns the hsi today and so even though even though, for those who know this or not, there's an HSI address assigned to each stake, and then that address can be owned by another address. Um, and so, yeah, if you drop it into this panel right here, um, it'll show you all of the, all of your stakes, including any HSIs that you own under those addresses. And then I also just kept the native address list as well so in the native the difference is sometimes people get confused so i just put the both in here um, the native doesn't include the owner addresses but it'll include the hsi addresses because that's standard in the system so on any of mine you can do that even with the mining data if you went here and you went to the filter by addresses you'll see the hsis as well uh and then one really, I like this tool. I use this one all the time. I'll show it to you. Um, I just made my, I know there's, that you have, you can do it in other places, but I made my own. You know, I like this one because I can come in here with my owner addresses with HSIs and drop it in. And it'll just tell me what the current value of HSI is. Um, since this is not, just so nobody gets excited, since this is not filtered, this is not my address, right? <laughs> but there's 16 million in uh, ICOSA that could be yielded from all of these stakes that are listed that are HSI stakes if they were sold back to uh, the contract. And so if you had a specific address, like uh, we'll just throw this owner in real quick. <clears throat> it's a quick way to get that because one of my strategies has been to acquire some of those um, HSI edges. So this particular guy, I don't know who it is, dropped his address in here. He's the owner. You'll notice the stake addresses are all different here. 
and they all have their different values. Um, so if this guy decided right now to sell back for Icosa all of the HSIs, he could yield 609,000 Icosa and that if sold and there was no slippage would be 360 or $386,000. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this is a good question, Johnny. I get this question from a lot of people. Um, it happens a lot because uh, I think we're all looking for validation, you know, about the about the hedron and the Maximus and all these other things. So, a couple of different layers of this. So I'll just stick to your your question and uh, try not to opine too much about it. Um, do I think buying Hedron or Max or Maxi Perpetuals are the best way to cheap get T-shares? Yes, yes, yes. Now it varies, of course, on Maximus and uh, and Desi and the other other things in Maximus Dow uh, because of, uh, well, it actually means for all of them. I mean, there's two things I am concerned about if I was to list them as risks, one is third party risk. Now, before anybody says anything, sure, I, I have used all of these applications. So I'm not saying there's a problem, but I'm just saying that one of the risks is um, that is a third party uh, contract. All right. So, OK, well, perhaps I can say there's enough times going by. I'm not worried about any of that. The second thing I worry about is community. And um, and along with that, the liquidity providers. So what do I mean by that is if conditions change over a period of time, one of the reasons I like the idea of getting into Hedron and, uh, you know, Icosa type stakes and and the Maxi um, Maximus Dow stuff is the flexibility to do something if I want to. Even though I'm like 99.99% stake, um, I, I like that idea of the flexibility. However, if there's no liquidity, I ain't getting out. So it doesn't matter if I think I'm flexible or not. Maybe it makes me feel better. But if I can't sell it, it's not going to matter. And so when I personally go look at um, these assets, I'm thinking about can I hold them for 10 years in the case of Desi, less than 10 now, but uh, can I hold Maximus for 13 and a half years? Can I hold these HSIs? Because I may not be able to do something with them when I want to in the middle. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense, right? Um, but all that being said, your, your primary question is what's the best way? I'll tell you what, if you're doing a Quattro Cinco and you're thinking about doing a Quattro Cinco, you better be thinking about looking at the auctions because it'd be silly not to. It'd be silly not to. You're already coming in with new capital, uh, potentially, right? If you're doing a Quattro Cinco and you're trying to acquire the hex to do it, why wouldn't you go buy at a discount? It is a little, it's not, it's not like crypto 101 though, right? So you do need a little bit of a, uh, we do need a little bit of uh, knowledge to really do that well. Um, so you'll need need to do that. Um, so you're you're you, this is like a compound question, right? So we got all these questions in here into one. Thoughts on where E hex and P hex will land price wise after Paul's launch? Man, I wish I knew. I do. I I, I really don't know. Um, I think long term. You know, like a cycle out, this cycle, next cycle. I think we're up to the right. That's what I think. What happens in the short time frames? It's going to be crazy. You know, uh, and you, you don't have to go very far to hear a bunch of people tell you a bunch of different things. It's going to pump. It's going to dump. It's going to go sideways. You know, I. You just don't know. So I'm going to. I follow the path that I think is probably most likely. On the Ethereum side, I think we may see a blunted pump. Maybe it'll go high. If it goes really high, I'll be I'll be super excited about that, right? So I'm not fud. I want it, I want it to go up on Ethereum. Um, so we may see Hex D 
do something like that. But people have had a long time to acquire Hex. It would be hard to believe at this point that、um, you know people haven't taken position. So we may see it go up. And then I don't think everyone has an appreciation for Hex the way that I appreciate Hex. And so, yeah, there are a lot of people that I've heard talking about selling Hex to bridge value, trying to sell the top of a presumed pump, and then also,、uh, you know, you know, take profits.、And、then you have a whole class of people that are thinking about. Uh, emergency end staking, which I don't recommend, but people will do it, and they're thinking about that. All of that ends up being downward pressure. So, I really do think that EHEX is going to be very volatile and it'll come down. But I'll tell you what: if it comes down far enough,、um, it, I don't think it's going to go, you know, so far that people don't buy it. People buy the hell out of it. Because there's a lot of dry powder on the side, so that that's what I think will happen there.、Uh, with PHEX, I think PHEX is going to go through the roof、um, at some point. At some point, I think initially you're going to also see、uh, war between price downward pressure on pulse for HEX and、um, and upward pressure. So the upward pressure is there's a lot of people like me that would love to pick up another million HEX in. On the pulse chain, right? But there are also a lot of people who bought、uh, hex、uh, in order to get a copy so that they could swap it for pulse. And so I think that initially we're going to have this round robin of pulse getting very expensive, and then to some extent pulse X being cheaper. And hex being cheaper, and then that rebounding over and over again. You know, so I could see that being a cycle of、um, of a of a fight back and forth.、Um, I think combined price of the asset, it's probably reasonable to think we'll hit all time high again. It's probably reasonable that we would go to eighty cents if you use the fifty x from from the bottom. I think it's more than possible that we can go to a dollar or two dollars during the,、uh, uh, you know, during this bull run on the combined value of hex, and of course there are estimates、uh, anywhere from two to a hundred dollars, right? And、uh, so I think that all all those are possible, and I think it's,、um, I think it's really a matter of reacting or not to. Things as they happen. I think that's how how it's going to lay out.、Um, and then your final question on this point was better to buy hex now to get a double. Well, I'll、uh, not financial advice, but I'll tell you that I concluded that was the case a long time ago, and that's what I did. And I and I would do it now if I was in the market to do it because I'm not. I'm already well, pretty well set in what I'm doing, and that is because I learned my lesson in hex from the big payday. Where I was really, I was really like, oh yeah, look at this big payday. I'm going to hold back and not buy, and I missed out on the best double I could ever have gotten by having gotten that double. So I, I took this stance with,、um, with Ethex, proceed as normal. I'll get my copy. So that's it. I mean, that's just what I did. It seemed to me like this was the the way to do it, and、uh, this way. I don't have to fret about it because, yeah, you know, sure. I was waiting for that big payday, you know, dip, and it came. Did I buy it? Nope, nope. I did not buy it. Did I buy some? Yeah, I bought some. But did I catch it? No, I did not. Why? I was sitting there watching it. Why didn't I catch it? Well, you know, half the people I was talking to were also saying it was going to go even further, so I was waiting. And by then, it doubled. <laughs> so, so I think the end, the end analysis, I would have saved myself a lot of time and trouble if I had just.、Uh, I had just gone all in, but I'm not. I'm not sad about that. I mean, I I had four、um, four entries over time, elongated, beginning of hex, prior to big payday, post big payday, and then the run up. So I'm happy with all that stuff. It's just, you know, I can't Monday Monday morning quarterback all this stuff.、Um, Yeah, and you know, dude, it could, Johnny. It could go in half. Don't know. 
I don't know. And I, and if it does, it does. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, it's just like, I don't know what's going to happen with it. I know I'm not being much help. Um, I do know that 60 cents is cheaper than 50 cents. Or I should say 6 cents is cheaper than 50 cents. So, pretty cool. Yeah, thanks for the good words, Johnny. Yeah, I talk about this stuff way too much, man. I could be sitting here for hours. We do this all day long, doing different things. Yeah, Red Squirrel, I'm watching that hex pulse ratio very closely. If I can swap a billion, if I can swap a billion pulse for 10 million hex, I am on it, man. Let me tell you, I will, I will be all over that, like you know, nobody's business. Um, because what that would end up being, I think that's a hundred to one, right? So if I had a billion, <clears throat> using my little calculator, if I had a billion pulse and I wanted to get 10 million hex, that would be a hundred to one ratio. And that's the ratio that I've been watching. Um, that would be, it's just a round number, you know, but that would be huge. Anything, actually, even, even, even half that would be like i'd be all over that stuff just from what i've seen happen with the ratios i think that um and i do think we're going to see um seems like the three to four x on uh you know three to four x pulse x per pulse has turned out to be where the market wants to go even though they're one-on-one -on -one parity and again that's because people want you know value wise it should be more like one-on-one -on -one based on what the pulse planners have come out with but um hey you know what if that ratio is is very high number of pulse x for pulse that would be another play you know to potentially make um you know my um, you know my my thumb rule is if i can get more hex because I, I did most of my uh, sacrificing with hex. If I can get more hex for the sacrifice than I got, than I put in, I guess that's a pretty good ratio for me, you know, based on the timing. But we're not going to know until it happens. It's, it's, it's going to be crazy. And I, you know, I'll be sitting on my hands um, for, for a while, you know, try not to, try not to go crazy. Yeah, Johnny, uh, that's it is it's about being crazy. That is crazy that we could be in and not. And it's like every time I get my I get my nose whacked by uh, Richard Hart, you know, like it's not like it's not like he it's not like he didn't say to me personally. Right. Uh, on video. Right. It's not like he didn't say on launch. You should probably avoid day one. And so what did I do? I allocated 80 percent of all my ETH day one. And then he said, oh. I told you guys, <laughs> all right. And then, then he said, Hey, you should probably be in for big payday. And I was like, oh, I don't know. All these other people in the chats, they seem to know an awful lot more. <laughs> but I listened to them. I learned my lesson over time to, that, um, uh, I, t I take, uh, Richard Hart's, uh, observations to heart, so to speak, right. To make sure that I, I can get what I need done done it just seems to always work out that he's fairly accurate if not 100 percent correct on everything that's pretty crazy not perfect but he's pretty accurate let's see did we do it all right hey guys thanks i appreciate it 100 1001 we hit 1001 followers and subscribers so thank you very much for that i appreciate it guys now i get to work on I got to keep working on the content and just get to uh, keep posting, posting new content and new things, uh, both on the site and also for the YouTubes for both. I think I will part ways with you here in a moment. Um, let's stop sharing on this guy. Yeah, thanks, Archie. I did it all myself. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really one of those guys like, ah, man, I don't like asking people to, to do stuff like that. Don't ask me why. Like if you said to me, Hey, do you mind, mind subbing to my channel? I'd be like, sure. But then I feel like it's hard for me to be like, Oh, can you guys sub? I feel like I'm, uh, I feel like I'm, uh, 
I'm shilling all the time. And I am. I am. I had to come to that conclusion, too, that that's what I'm doing now with this stuff. Yeah, thanks, Clifton. I appreciate it. And Archie. Yeah, you're better off not get, having gotten in for day one. It's, 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 a, it's a good thing. Yeah, everybody, hey, thanks for the for the comments on the on the congrats. Um, so yeah, all right. Well, let's wrap it up here. I think I've already burned burned some good time. I'm going on with. Uh, I got to go join the uh, uh, join a couple streams a little bit later um, tonight. And of course, Randy Halarski tonight. I like following him and and watching his uh, his stream. So we'll go do that. Um, hit the likes, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for the thousand. Uh, Patreon's up and running. Uh, that's something that'll probably begin to wrap up and, and I'll, I'll freeze kind of in place. I guess we'll see what happens with it as we end April and go into May. The new website will probably trump that. Uh, but for Patreon users, I do have uh, the Patreon link here in the, um, you know, in the, in the comments, uh, in the description of the video. And when we get out to... Um, we get out to uh, the Patreon. There's a five dollar a month option for support, and I have promised the people that go in for the five dollars that I'll do the um, do the accounts, which will give them a guest account, and they'll be able to download and get to more data. And then more things are coming on the way, um, even beyond the public facing stuff. So it's all good. And one last look at let's see what happened to price while we we're sitting here. Yeah, don't get fudded out, guys. Don't get fudded out. 6.3. 6 .3, it looks like. All right, my friends. Have a great night, and I'll be back tomorrow with T-Share Friday. And we're out.